Hi, this is Scott Picard with Verde Real Estate Group with today's real estate tip. Today we're going to talk about a topic that comes up very frequently in a real estate transaction, and that's home insurance or hazard insurance. And with us today is Jeff Thomas from MinStar Insurance. Jeff, how are you doing? Good, Scott. Thanks for having me. Oh, thanks for being here. So today we're going to discuss the anatomy of an insurance policy as it relates to housing. There's uh, in an insurance policy, you have all these different coverages, and most people are wondering, what does this all mean? It coverages A through F. You know, it's like alphabet soup. So Jeff is going to help us navigate this and make make some sense out of all the madness. So sure. So you when you look at a, a policy or a quote that you get, you'll notice that they'll they'll, they'll break it down the A through F. Um, your A is going to be your dwelling coverage, also known as real property coverage. So the home that you buy from Scott and his team, this is what the this is the basically the nuts and bolts of the whole policy. This is where majority of the premium is going to derive from. So when you look to coverage A, you're thinking structure, um, any built-ins, uh, walls, flooring, stuff like that. Okay. And we talked about it on previous video too, like the you know the difference in coverages there. We can get replacement costs versus actual cash versus value. actual cash value, right? Right. So if you're buying a, like a say a, a vintage 1920s Rambler in Minneapolis, and you've got that built-in buffet there that you. Uh, that you fell in love with when you walked into the house. I mean, you want to make sure that that's covered, right? In make sure case. you have the replacement cost. Right, the right. Covers, correct. Yep. Okay, so that's that's coverage A. So you're dealing with the, you know the, the dwelling, the structure. Um, what's B? So B is your your other structures. So um, for some people, this may not be as important. For some people, this can be very important. And this is going to be anything that's not attached to the actual dwelling. So think of it foundation-wise. If like a detached garage or a shed. We call that a guest house. Guest house. Yeah, right, right. <laughs> Mother-in-law suite, yeah, you know. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so a uh, pool, um, stuff like that where, you know, it's not actually attached to the, the dwelling itself. That's going to be your other structures coverage. Now, to be honest, you know, there's not much premium that goes into this. Most insurance companies are going to give you around 10% on average of the dwelling that I just touched on. So example, you have a $200,000 home, you'd get, let's say 10%, you would get 20,000 in- That's for other structures. Other structures, Okay, yep. so I have a detached two car garage, I, they'll, they'll say, hey, and the house is 300,000, they'd say maybe 30 grand coverage. Right. Okay. Now, right. some, some insurance companies, like I said, will go with the 10%, some allow you to actually scale that back. So you can cut some costs here. If you don't have that shed or detached garage, you don't have a need for that, Maybe try to find a policy you can scale that down to near zero if you don't have a need for it. So. Okay, okay. And just a sidebar too, like your business is you're a broker, right? So you, you work with multiple insurance companies, so you can it's not a one size fits all, right? Correct. Because there's different options for different people. And every and company's different. They all have their kind of niche markets and what they do or how their policies play out or percentages, stuff like that. Okay. As far as the, your choices or options within a policy. Okay, so option C, what's our option C? Option C, I'd say this is probably the second most important part of the the, uh, the actual policy, and this is gonna be your personal property or contents coverage. Okay. So think of it as when you load everything up on that U-Haul truck, and you bought that home from Scott and his team, everything that's going on that U-Haul into that house, think of that as your contents coverage. Or I like to kind of explain it as take the home, turn it upside down, whatever shakes out, that's going to be your personal property coverage. Okay. Depending on the workmanship, it could be the, the siding and the, <laughs> right. and the trim and stuff. <laughs> so and in our case, it's, we, don't, we, we actually do pay for a Conestoga wagon. So when people want to move, we will, we will provide that with them, to them free of charge. So what about uh, D? Coverage D or option D. D is going to be built into the policy, and this is probably not going to be an option for the insured. And the this is this is what's called loss of use coverage. Okay. What loss of use coverage is is think about um, you had a fire. You cannot live in that. Let's say you had some water damage, and it's just it's not livable. You would have to go to seek, you know, whether it's a hotel stay, maybe a VRBO for a month. Um, there's going to be additional expenses for a living outside of your home because now you don't have probably a full kitchen. Um, there's going to be, you know, probably additional costs for clothing, you know, last right. minute, um, additional money for eating out at restaurants. That's going to be your What's last What's usually covered? What's the extent of coverage on that? Yeah, so it's it varies from company to company. You'll find that some companies will be actual sustained loss within 12 months. So they don't put a limit of coverage on that, which is pretty good. Okay. And then some companies you'll find anywhere from, you know, I'd say 10 to about 30% um, built in, so it can it can vary. So when you see that, and you only see maybe like twenty thousand there. 
Uh, you might want to see if you can bump that up or maybe look to a different you know, Yeah, because that's not going to last. Not very long. It's going to go very far. And, you know, I will tell you, I don't know what you see, but uh, we have a property management company. We do get calls from folks several times during the year where they're like, we were representing a family who's had a problem with housing. And it's water more than fire. It is. Like everyone, like fire gets... Fire gets like the top billing and it's a lot more dramatic and it's a lot more exciting for people and it's a lot more, you know, horrific and stuff. But water is the real, it the is real it, villain. I think I, uh, f- funny story. My, my son actually, um, we had a, t- a town home, second floor. He had flushed the toilet and keep in mind, he was only about two years of age. We had left the day for that day, came home eight hours later to waterfalls oh. coming down. And that gives you an idea of the amount of money to go in to replace everything that we had. And we had to be out of the house for two and a half months. While they oh, were, yeah. It's, a, it's, a, it's, it's an, an absolute nightmare. nightmare. Yeah. <laughs> it's a nightmare. It's so, um, okay. So we're, uh, that was D. That was right? D. So now what about E? E, very important. Um, it's going to be probably a little, uh, it's going to be mo- very inexpensive on the policy. Uh, that's your personal liability coverage. Uh, I tell everybody to max this out with your insurance company uh, because most insurance policies will probably give you a limit of coverage around 300000 Every once in a while, I'll see a policy that's got 100000 in coverage. But for you to increase that to, let's say, 500000 or a million, it's, you're not going to see it. It's going to be maybe $12 to $20 extra per year. And that's going to be if a suit was brought up against you. Okay. So, and again, we're talking about your primary residence, your, your, your structure there, and the hazard policy. You can add, most companies will allow you to up that? To increase it. Really? And, that's, and that, that brings me on to my next, uh, next topic. Would, besides the liability coverage, if you had a need for, I don't know if you've ever heard of an umbrella oh, policy. Oh, yeah, of course. Yeah. So an umbrella policy is going to be an extension of liability coverage over and beyond the homeowners that you have, but it encompasses all your insurance. So, for an example, if you're somebody that has a lot of toys, autos, stuff like that, and you're concerned, or let's say you have a youthful driver in the household. Let's say kids. Kids, yeah. And that's something where maybe not only would you max out your liability coverage, say 500000 or a million, but then look to maybe like a million-dollar umbrella, which is relatively, it's pretty inexpensive. Yeah, I mean, for most folks, it's what, 300 bucks a Two, year or less. Yeah, a year. yeah, I mean, that's not, it's not everyone, so don't, you know, right. that's not a quote. And you get, and you get a d- discount on your other insurance, too, as you're well. you're stacking the coverages. Right. Okay, so all right, so that's that's E E plus. What about F? F is going to be your med expense coverage, medical expense. So uh, I kind of like to explain this as someone comes to your home, they cut themselves, or say they break their leg, and they feel that you're responsible. What if we break their leg? <laughs> well, <laughs> we might have a different, <laughs> different issue. But then they would go to the hospital. Well, this is where you they would come back to your med expense coverage, and then the insurance company would cut a check based upon your medical expense. It usually ranges from about thousand dollars up to you can choose i think up to about ten thousand about ten g's and you ask yourself what happens if we go over and beyond that ten thousand or five thousand limit then they have to bring a suit up against you in the form of a liability claim okay. which will then be back to that e that we were talking okay, so don't fly get book a one-way ticket to bolivia or anything, right. Right? Okay. <laughs> okay no that's good um that, that's that's really important to know because i think a lot of folks they see that 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 coverage f and they're like what, what does that really mean and you know in a lot of cases you're kind of just looking to cover the deductible, right? If they've got medical, like, cause, and then, and then if it truly, truly, if there is liability, I mean, then that falls under a different classification. Right. They right? would actually have to seek a, probably a lawyer in that situation and bring the suit up against you. So it's not like you can max out your medical expenses and just go right to that liability. Right. You actually have to bring a suit up against the insured, which would be the homeowner. Okay. So. All right. All right. Well, that was like a lot of information in a short amount of time, but really, really, really informative. So Jeff, I appreciate you being here today. This yes. was awesome. Um, I'm Scott Picaric, but before we get into me, we're going to talk to Jeff. What if someone wants to get a hold of you? What's the best way? Sure. Uh, email or phone. Uh, email is Jeff, J E F F, at M as in Mary, N as in Nancy, star like a star in the sky, INS dot com. And my phone number is 612 299 1299, option zero. And that's Jeff Thomas with Minstar Insurance. I'm Scott Picaric with Verde Real Estate Group. We hope you found this content valuable. Like always, you can reach us at 612-600-8888, 612-600-8888, or online 24-7 at verde-realestate.com. If there's any way we could be of further service, please let us know. Thank you.